In this lecture, I will cover some details of the formation of extratropical cyclones, which are responsible for a bulk of our weather in North America. At the conclusion of this video, you should be able to describe the importance of extratropical cyclones and understand one model for their formation. Here's a list of the definition and importance of extratropical cyclones. Extratropical cyclones occur in the middle latitudes, both north and south of the equator. These bands show the location where extratropical cyclones form and migrate. Extratropical cyclones differ from tropical systems that form closer to the equator. Tropical cyclones are systems associated with areas of low, intense low pressure, high winds, and large amounts of precipitation. In North America, they are called hurricanes. In Southeast Asia, they are referred to as typhoons. Extratropical cyclones are connected with fronts and horizontal gradients and temperature and dew points. With our work on weather maps, air masses, and fronts, this image should be somewhat familiar. The different colors show various amounts of precipitations and the boundaries between the colors and the white parts of the map are our fronts. This area of precipitation is a spectacular example of an extra tropical cyclone that is moving across the central part of the United States. Extratropical cyclones, along with anticyclones, are responsible for much of Earth's weather. Remember, anticyclones are areas of high pressure around which air moves in a clockwise direction in the northern hemisphere and a counterclockwise direction in the southern hemisphere. The map on the left shows several anticyclones across North America. The satellite image on the right shows an anticyclone off the coast of Australia. In this case, the air circulation is anticlockwise because of the location in the southern hemisphere. Now let's look at one model for the formation of extratropical cyclones. This is called the Norwegian model in honor of our Norwegian meteorologist who conceptualized these steps. The following text and images are from the website Jetstream Online School for Weather. In all of the images, the image in all of the slides, the image on the left is a map view of the frontal system, and the image on the right is a three-dimensional view of the system. In this model, there is initially a boundary or front separating warm air to the south from colder air to the north. This front is usually stationary. A wave on the front will form as an upper level disturbance embedded in the jet stream moves over the front. The front develops a kink where the wave is developing. Precipitation will begin to develop with the heaviest occurrence along the front or dark green areas. As the wave intensifies, both cold and warm front fronts become better organized. The wave becomes a mature, low pressure system while the cold front, moving faster than the warm front, catches up with the warm front. As the cold front overtakes the warm front, an occluded front, shown here, forms. Note the anti-clockwise direction of winds around the low pressure area. Finally, as the cold front continues, Advancing on the warm front, the occlusion increases. That is this part of the front. Eventually cuts off the supply of the warm air and causing the low pressure system to gradually dissipate, therefore ending the precipitation associated with this event. This is the final step in the Norwegian cyclone model. This is a satellite image 
of a well-developed extratropical cyclone heading across the United States. The video from which this image came from can be found as a link in the week 9 and 10 folder. Can you spot the low pressure associated with this system? How about the occluded front and the cold front? The cool, pun intended, thing about extratropical cyclones is how they combine many of the weather concepts we have learned. Air masses, fronts, temperature, humidity, etc. I hope for, and I hope from this lecture you have gained some understanding of their importance and formation.